Next, one of the most daring and demented shows I've seen on stage recently comes courtesy of Teatro Chelsea, a new branch of Apollinaire Theatre. The show is called Don't Eat the Mangoes and is delicious enough that I wanted to get to the heart of it with two of Teatro Chelsea's theatre artists. Mariela Lopez-Ponce, Jaime Hernandez, thank you so much for being with us. Mariela, I'm going to start with you and your play. This is extraordinary. Uh, it's hard to talk about because I don't want to give anything away, but I'll say what I said on radio. It's deliciously demented <laughs> as we find these sisters come together caring for their ailing parents, and then it takes this big turn. But how do you describe what we see here? That's a great question. Um, the play is set in San Juan in a neighborhood called El Comandante. It's a working class neighborhood. And it's basically the story of these uh, three adult sisters who are caregivers for their ailing parents who are both rather ill. And you see the dynamics of the sisters in this situation that they bring from their childhood, from their relationships with each other, um, from some of the political differences between them, regarding the, the Puerto Rican situation. It's, a, I think, a wickedly funny script with some deliciously dark elements, um, but also with a lot of heart. And I think in the end, it's about these strong women that find a way to overcome and uh, carve their own paths in life. And, and much more, again, that we're, <laughs> we're leaving unsaid here. We are leaving some things unsaid. The night that I had in the theater, just I felt like we all came together in this moment because of the turn that it takes, and you're with this family, and you feel it. It was this electricity in the audience. But Jaime, let me bring you into this. You, as we first started talking about this, you you pointed out to me this metaphor for the family and the relationship between the United States and Puerto Rico. What do you see here? I think with a lot of male patriarchy that can plague certain families, not only with Latin culture, but in general, um, I think the way that it is portrayed in this family can be sort of a metaphor, as you mentioned, how the U.S. treats Puerto Rico with its policies that they, they say that they're doing the right thing with um, Promesa and, you know, even with the tax credits right now that are causing a lot of um, rich people to flock to Puerto Rico, which then causes higher cost of living, which then can displace the residents of Puerto Rico. Um, and they saying this tax credit is for the better. People in Puerto Rico would say otherwise, but I think that is one of the ways that you can say how it is a metaphor between the family, especially with the father, and with Puerto Rico treating, uh, U.S. treating Puerto Rico. There are many uh, heritages in terms of the backgrounds of your actors. How, how much was that an exploration as you started this piece? Uh, that's a wonderful uh, question. So we have two actors that are Puerto Rican. We have a Colombian. We have an actress that's half Puerto Rican, half Dominican. We have a Spaniard. Um, and then in, in the crew and in some of the other artists, we have Puerto Ricans, Colombians. Um, right off the bat, uh, the differences in, in the language to some extent, the expressions, pronunciation, that it, it's fun to learn about. And Jaime, this is a bilingual piece, and uh, I'm not somebody who speaks Spanish very fluently at all, and yet, of course, I followed this, and as I keep saying, adored the piece. But this is part of the aim of Teatro Chelsea. Talk to me about what you're demonstrating here, how this is for the community, also a public at large. So this is part of Teatro Chelsea's mission, to uplift artists, whether it's directors, theater actors, and not only that, but it's also to make it accessible to the community uh, because language can be such a barrier in terms of people going to see shows. If they can't understand it because they don't speak English, well then they're not going to go see the show. And Chelsea specifically as a very big Central American Latinx population that only speaks in Spanish. So the idea that we have a theater and a lot of the shows have been done in English, so a lot of the shows can't be seen by its own residents, was a big reason why Theatre or Chelsea became a thing. But what strikes me here is that with the, the racial reckoning in this country, mm -hmm. all of the voices that we've not been hearing, uh, I had never seen a piece by this playwright before of Don't Eat the Mangoes. Uh, so what's the opportunity that, that, that's presented here in an effort like this as you open this up to a wider platform of artists and writers and theater practitioners? 
I think the opportunity is to give the voice to the voiceless. There's just been this uplift of companies and representation in Boston theater for BIPOC, for voiceless artists who have predominantly been underrepresented on the stage and just in art platforms in general. So I think shows like this, you know, they give leeway and you show that you know, the, we can make great work, whether it's the writers or the artists on stage. Mariella, how do you see this pushing forward? I mean, you must just be chomping at the bit now, both to be on stage and who else you can present, what other writers you can bring to the fore. Uh, to me, it's, it's thrilling and I think it just enriches the artistic community, enriches the opportunities um, for people to come to the theater and maybe get a different perspective from another culture. But the interesting to me ultimately is that in getting those different peeks into what a different culture, a different language might be, you know, ultimately great theater is universal mm -hmm. and what we see is ourselves in these other representations. And to me, that's really exciting and fulfilling. There's just something fundamental about human expression and nature uh, outside of language. And I think we could all identify with sibling rivalry to some degree, yes. can't we? <laughs> Jaime, I'm curious about, uh, you looked at the community of Chelsea and really tailored this to Chelsea as a specific people and city as well. How did you look at what the city needed and what you could bring? I've been born and raised in Chelsea my whole life. I see there is a lack of specifically theater. Luckily, Apollinaire has the Apollinaire Play Lab, which actually recently Danielle said that there's been an uptick in uh, youth registration. So that's really exciting. Um, but there's just not this big representation of theater arts in Chelsea. So with youth programs, with the Apollinaire Play Lab and then Theater Chelsea, we felt like making Bilingual work will bring people to the theater so they can enjoy stuff uh, that's in their city that they deserve to enjoy. In my reading about you, it seems like from the moment you were a child, <laughs> you, theater has been it. Very specific focus for you, and you haven't veered off. Why theater? Uh, I don't. When I was in middle school, um, my sister was in the drama club at high school, and I saw her do a show. I was like okay, this, this looks like fun. So when I got to high school, I did my first show. So I've always been uh, art oriented uh, in my life and I hope to continue doing that uh, throughout the rest of my life. Well, finally, I just want to ask about the theater on the waterfront in Chelsea. It just sounds like these enchanting summer nights and as we're all hoping that the weather is going to warm up <laughs> shortly and we'll, we'll have these, these great summer nights, what can we expect? This summer, we're planning on doing a bilingual adaptation of Wizard of Oz in <gasps> Chelsea downtown uh, for the community of Chelsea to come down and see. Uh, we have a lot of great ideas planned for that. Um, and for the wider community. Oh, Absolutely. We welcome you. Well, I look forward to being there. That sounds so exciting. Congratulations on the show and your efforts. It's extraordinary. Thank and you, Jared. Thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it.